Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. And as you can guess from the intro, I'm going to be talking about graphics tablets. Do you really need them as a photographer? And what are the benefits of having a graphics tablet? Okay, let's break into this massive debate. It's up there with Apple versus Mac and Canon versus Nikon or Sony or whatever you want to argue is better than the other. Uh, there is no right answer to this. There is no wrong answer to this. It's just personal preference. What works for you may not work for someone else. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it all. Um, from an audio standpoint, from a graphic design standpoint, and a photography standpoint, because they're my three backgrounds. I studied music in college, self-taught in graphic design, self-taught photography. Uh, what I can tell you is, from an audio standpoint, there's never much room given in a recording studio, which are 32 channel SSL, beautiful analog desk, and then your computer's tucked away in the corner. You don't have much room for a mouse, so the standard has been to use a trackball mouse. So I've been using a trackball mouse since 2004. When I was studying music in college, that's when I got a trackball mouse, and I've loved it since, and I get great, great results. I use a trackball mouse even into graphic design. I was the only one in my team ever to use a trackball mouse. Everyone would be using graphics tablets, or they'd be using ergonomic mouses, and I'm like, yeah. is it mouses or is it mice? That's another thing. Anyway, I'm going to call it mouse just because. Um, but yeah, I had a friend of mine, a, a designer, and he went and spent a big chunk of money on an ergonomical uh, mouse and then found that he didn't overly like it. And he ended up switching back to a standard mouse because his hand was sore. I've had issues in the past with drumming with bad technique. I still have it. I have a lump on my wrist here. It's a collagen buildup on my tendons. And there's times that, you know, from a lot of playing and a lot of gigging um, that I won't be able to actually make a fist. It'll actually be quite sore and painful. I have to stretch it out. So the idea is of using a mouse that could cause carpal tunnel in my right hand, which is my, that's that's my main hand for drumming and everything else. Um, no, so I always opted for the easier way, you know, I just found the trackball mouse quite easy. And before we get into the pros and cons of this graphics tablet, if you are enjoying this video, you're getting something from my videos, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell to get notified every time I post up a new video. Let's get into what we're actually here to talk about, and that is the XP Pen Deco Pro. The Deco Pro line have two options, a small and a medium, but don't get discouraged by these names thinking that they're going to be too small for your large 27 inch 4K monitor like I have over here. In actual fact, when you see the size of the working area, within this graphics tablet, the Deco Pro Small is a little bit bigger than the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. And then the Deco Pro Medium is a little bit smaller than the Wacom Intuos Pro Large. So when it comes to size-wise, there's not much difference at all. Some of the features on these is that it's powered by USB-C. It has eight customizable buttons plus customizable scroll wheel and trackpad. Both the scroll wheel and the working area on the pad are illuminated, which gives a nice slick look about these. In previous models of the XP Pen, they did feel quite plasticky and cheap. This is finished lovely on the side and wrapped around to the back with a brushed aluminium finish. So it, it has a little bit, it has a bit of weight to it. It has a bit of a premium feel to it, which is everything you're looking for when you want this to last a long time and when you consider the fact that it's three times cheaper than Wacom's equivalent it's it kind of it kind of nearly sells itself now if we compare the design of the pen you will notice that it's almost the same as Wacom. It looks basically like a Wacom pen, uh, even down to the fact that it's battery free. It does not need any batteries, which is fantastic. You don't need to charge, you don't have to worry about any of that. It works every time. It has a uh, customizable buttons on it, so you can have a left and right click or whatever you want on the, on the pen, which comes in quite handy too as well, I find. Um, but yeah, it's it's really nice, and even though you're saving a lot of money by going to XP Pen, you don't lose out on the features like what you would want out of a Wacom tablet, which is the pressure sensitivity. Both of these are offering over 8,000 levels of pen pressure. Now that I've talked about the features that you would be looking at to consider what graphics tablet to buy, build quality, size, and all the features that come with it, customized with buttons and pressure sensitivities, I use none of that. I don't care for the pressure sensitivity. I forgot to use the customizable buttons, I'd everything set up on it and I stopped using them, went back to using the keyboard. And um, yeah, I just, I buy a graphics tablet literally for the accuracy when you're using it. And that's what's so important about it. That is the defining thing. When you're doing a lot of exposure blending and dodging and burning, you want to be accurate. You can use the keyboard shortcuts like I have for years. So if you're so used to them, you can still use them and you're in with the tablet. It's just such an easy way to work. It's accurate. And that's why I bought a graphics habit 
that's why I think a graphics tablet is important for photographers because your work is just as intensive as a graphic designer, as an artist, yet we settle for substandard mouse. This will revolutionise how you edit your photos. It will change everything. And the great thing about the XP pens is the fact that they're affordable. So you can take the risk, spend £100, get into it, see if it, see if it is something for you. But there is a learning curve with these. There is a coordination that you need to get between on, on, the, pa on the pad and looking at the screen. There is a little bit of a coordination that you're going to have to build practices needed for that. So you, when you do buy it, you do need to give yourself a little bit of time to get used to it. Nick Page is famous for saying that he got rid of all his mouse to make sure that he only used this. I still use the trackball mouse in my workflow and I use it in conjunction with the pen when I need to use the pen. I use the pen. When I want to use the trackball mouse, I use the trackball mouse. I don't I don't decide that, oh no, I've got the I've got the pen. I'm only going to use the pen. Like I know people are not going to agree with me with saying that I still use the trackball mouse and that I don't use any pressure sensitivity in any of the work that I do. But I just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all how I edit my photos. I'm like, I know how to use the opacity on my brush and I'm used to that. I just want it to be accurate and it's quicker. I find I work quicker with a graphics tablet. So who do I think this is geared for? This is really geared for the people who not just edit the photos in Lightroom, but go into Photoshop and do more extensive, heavy-handed editing. You can do this kind of editing in Lightroom. Um, I don't really overly like doing it. I will do all my dodging and burning in Photoshop. So just, it's not to say that if you were only using Lightroom, you shouldn't get a graphics tablet. Again, it's personal preference, but I think it kind of be wasted on you. But if you're looking for an easy to use, extremely accurate way of editing, a graphics tablet is what you should be looking for to up that game level on you. And if you are a graphic designer, you really should be considering a graphics tablet for your work because your work is intensive. It's as intensive as an artist. You shouldn't be settling for just a mouse. You should be looking to make sure that your work is perfect. Your work is outstanding. And I think the XP Pen is a great option for you. It's not an entry level graphics tablet. I think it's up there on par with Wacom. It's just an affordable option. It's a third party affordable option that you don't have to put the expense into. I just want to say XP Pen did not give me this graphics tablet. They don't even know I'm doing this video. Like, like I said already, I've owned two of these. This is my second one I've owned. This literally is my own personal one. These are my personal thoughts on this. I'm extremely impressed and happy with the company. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something from this. If you are on the fence about whether or not you should invest in a graphics tablet, I would highly recommend the XP Pen Deco Pro Small. It's one third the price of the Wacom equivalent and it offers everything that Wacom are, are offering. They're not for everyone. Not everyone can get, can get around that coordination issue. So do give it its time to get used to it. You may need to give it a month before you get comfortable with it. But once you get comfortable with it, you'll love it. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, ring that bell to get notified for the next time I post a video. I post a video every Thursday. Uh, follow me on my social medias. You'll find me everywhere on Mark Duffy Photography, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, sometimes a little bit of Twitter. And until the next time, later Gators. <laughs> <laughs>